All right, so OpenAI and ChatGPT have once again released another model, this one called GPT-01 Preview. And a lot of people are saying it's actually a pretty big step forward. So I wanted to give it a bit of a test for coding in this video. So you might've seen previously, they released GPT-4-0 or GPT-40. And I actually never even made a video about this one. I started making one and I found that it really didn't make that big of a difference. It wasn't that big of a leap forward, at least in my little bit of testing. So I didn't think it was worth making another video because I've made a lot of chat GPT videos in the past, but I have heard that this one is able to do a lot more sort of reasoning than previous models. So I want to give it a test with something that GPT-4 and other GPT models I've tried before have struggled with a little bit, but ultimately could sort of do. And then I'll give it a much more difficult task and see how it handles that as well. So the task I've used a lot is to create a tic-tac-toe game using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And I'll just say, put it all in one file, just so that it's a little bit easier for me to just copy and paste it and see if it works. And one thing you'll notice here that's a little bit different than what we've seen before is it's actually thinking. So before it does anything, it goes through this process now where it just tries to figure out what exactly it's going to need to do. And if you think about the way that we as humans sort of tackle different problems, this is what we do too. We think first and then we act second. And in the past, GPT sort of just took our prompt and then immediately started doing stuff. So Hopefully this sort of modeling GPT and AI based on how we work as humans is going to give better responses. And we can see here what it says is it thought for 12 seconds about crafting the game, consolidating the code, and then piecing together the game. And here is the code. So I'll go ahead and copy this. We can see all of the code here. And I'll come over here to a code pin and I'm just going to paste it in and we'll see if this works. All right, so it says tic-tac-toe and it is X's turn, so I can click on one of these, and it looks like we do have a working game. And okay, player O has won, I can no longer click, I can restart, and the game restarts again. So this does actually seem to be working, which is actually a bit of a step up from what I've seen with GPT in the past. I've tried this a few times, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it needs extra prompting, but with that in mind, let's try to do a little bit of extra prompting and see if it can make this a bit better. So let's say, update it to look more modern and use some animations. So let's just see if it can write some CSS for us to make everything look a little bit cleaner, which is something that when I've tried in the past, it really didn't do a great job of. All right, so we can see it thought for 22 seconds about creating a modern tic-tac-toe, piecing together the update this time, upgrading the code, crafting a clear response, crafting a response, and mapping out visual themes. So really even this whole thing where it shows you what it thought about isn't always the most perfect and coherent. Like crafting a clear response followed by crafting a response feels a little bit redundant, but either way, it was able to finish this. So let's copy this code again, and we can see it did add a decent bit of CSS, and then it told us what is actually new. But I'll just come over here to our code pin, and I'm going to replace this code with our new code, and we'll see what it actually changed. Okay, so looks like we have a more dark theme. We have this color on this restart game button and it actually changes on hover. These also change on hover and it looks like they grow a little bit. And ooh, I like that little animation when you actually click on these. That's actually pretty nice. Yeah, I'm a fan of this. And ooh, okay, so you get a sort of green animation when the game is won. What happens if we had a tie game out of curiosity? So let's do this. How do I make this game tie? I need O here, X here. Okay, so just as game ended in a draw. And of course we could restart again. So yeah, I think this looks a lot better. This aesthetically looks a lot nicer than most things I've ever generated with ChatGPT. So I think this is pretty good. It's hard to say how much better it is than the previous models, but it certainly worked pretty well. But now I want to give it a much more difficult task and something I've actually tried to do in the past and found very difficult myself. And of course would have loved to have some AI that could have done it for me. And that's that I made a video a long time ago where I took a bunch of hate comments from my channel and I made a programming language out of them. And it was pretty difficult. It took me a lot of time to write that interpreter and to just get everything figured out. So what I'm going to do is try to get ChatGPT to create a new programming language. So let's say create the rules for a programming language. And I'll say based on Gen Z slang 
and references. I think this could be kind of funny. So let's see what exactly it comes up with. All right, so it thought for 40 seconds this time, so a little bit longer, and you can see it had a lot of actual steps it sort of went through to think through this problem. So it's actually doing a lot before it even starts giving any output. And then we can see it has the Zlang programming language specification. So our data types, we have digits, vibes is a string data type, and feels is a Boolean data type. So feels is lit mood woke period t. I don't even know what that means. What it, I, I'm not Gen Z enough for this one. Assignment operator is mood. So score mood a hundred. What is this? Period t. I need to somebody like inform me what that means. It marks the end of a statement similar to a semicolon. Okay, then constants. OG declares a constant value. So OG digits pi mood 3.1415 period T. Okay. <laughs> arithmetic operators. We have standard arithmetic operators. Fair enough. Increment and decrement is glow up and glow down. Nice. Love that. Control structures. We have bet starts in the if statement. Okay. And no cap is an else block. These are actually pretty funny. I'm Thoroughly impressed with ChatGPT's, I guess, both knowledge of Gen Z slang and just like slight humor that it's injected into this. So I'm kind of a fan. Bop begins a for loop. Sus starts a while loop. Break statement is OK Boomer. That's kind of funny. Functions. So slay declares a function. A function call is going to be fire. A return statement is snatched. Then we have classes as well. So it went pretty deep into this. Classes is a squad. Inheritance is extra. Object instantiation is Stan. My car mood Stan car Tesla period T. Love that. Access modifiers. So public and private are high key and low key. Creative like that. Try catch blocks. We have shook starts a try block and salty starts a catch block. Input output. We have flex and spill. Okay. So we can like spill the T. Love that. Single line comments. Okay, and here is our T. So that is, I guess, what we might spill. <laughs> Boolean values, true and false. Woke is true and big yikes is false. And then miscellaneous imports, terminate, arrays, and lists. And then we have some sample code. Okay, so for one, it just wrote a lot of stuff here, which is kind of cool. So this is a much longer output than I think we've gotten with ChatGPT in the past, at least on the UI. I think you could get longer outputs using the API. Like this, this is a lot more than we've gotten in the past. But now what to do beyond this, which already was actually kind of impressive, is to see if it can actually implement an interpreter for this. So in that video, I created a programming language based on hate comments, and then I implemented an interpreter, which took me absolutely forever. So let's see if GPT can do it. So let's just say implement an interpreter. Ooh, I spelled it right. For this language in JavaScript, which I know you probably don't want to write an interpreter in JavaScript, but it's just going to make it easier for us to test everything. And let's say, and include an HTML file to test it. All right, so again, GPT thought for a while, this time for 39 seconds, and you can see it sort of went through its thought process here. And it gave us this HTML file that we will use to test it, and this JavaScript file, which is our interpreter. And just looking at this from a very high level, I think it actually looks fairly reasonable. This is, I think, sort of how I would go about writing an interpreter. This feels fairly similar to what I actually did in that video. And you can see it actually wrote a lot of code. So this is fairly complex code that it wrote and a lot of it. So this is a lot more code than we've been able to get from previous GPT models, at least using them directly on ChatGPT instead of with the API. But even when I've used the API in the past, I've found that when I ask for a lot of code, it tends to just either not give it to me or just not actually work. Then it also gave us some instructions and example usage so that we can actually test it. So what I'm going to do is copy all of this over into CodePen again, and we'll see if it actually works. All right, so this is the tester it gave us. So it says, write your Zlang code here, and then we can run the code. So I'm going to paste in the hello world code. So this came from GPT. This is our hello world. And if I run this, we do actually get hello world. And let's make sure this isn't just something hard coded in. Let's add some more exclamation marks. Yeah, this does actually seem to work. All right, let's try example two, variable declarations and printing. So this is a little bit more code. Put this in here, run the code name Alex age is 21. So vibes name 
Alex, period T, digits, age, mood, 21, period T, and we get a name of Alex and an age of 21. All right, that seems to work. All right, so let's go through a few more of these, see if they're all working. I kind of doubt it, to be honest, but let's try a function. All right, so we have slay, greet, vibes, name, flex, hey, period T, fire, greet, Taylor, period T, run code. I right, just prints out hey. So it looks like name isn't actually getting passed in is sort of what I'm getting here. What if we were to remove this? Yeah, so that's nothing. So I think name is sort of an empty string when it should be Taylor. So something here is not quite working. But I mean, this is pretty close. It at least was able to run this code. It's just not running it with our parameter, but it's pretty close. All right, let's try something else. Let's try an if statement, see how this works. Put this in here, run code error. So this is the first one we got an error in. Expected closing parentheses after condition. All right. But it does look like we do have the closing parentheses after the condition. So we have scores greater than or equal to 90. So I don't actually know here, is the error in the interpreter or is the error in this code? Is this not valid by Zlang? Like maybe we need spaces here or something like that. So let's try adding a space. Does that work? It does not. So I'm assuming something about this isn't working where it's not able to detect that. So something with this interpreter is not correct. Now, does that mean that this didn't work? No, but it does make me wonder, like, is this something I could have actually used this for? Because sure, it gave me a good starting point. But if I was to now try to build my own interpreter based on this, I would have to go find all the mistakes it made. So that could be kind of difficult. But anyways, let's try the last example I had, which is a for loop. I would imagine we might get a similar error that we had on the if statement. And we do. Okay, expected period T, which again, I, I don't know what that means. I don't even know if I'm saying that right at the end of the statement. So I don't know where it is expecting that. Let's see if we got rid of this line. What happens? Okay, same thing. So it has something to do with the actual for loop, I would imagine. So let's get rid of that real quick. And now that's not working. What if we got rid of the spaces? Oh, it's saying, okay, I doesn't exist. So let's just make that like the number 10 or something. And we have iteration 10. Okay, so that works. Our bop <laughs> does not work. So something here is missing. So we have digits i mood zero. So I think this is i equals zero. And then our semicolon and then i is less than five semicolon and then I plus plus essentially. There's no semicolon there. And yeah, you don't actually need one if this was like based on JavaScript essentially. So yeah, I don't know exactly what isn't working here. I would imagine something in the interpreter is not properly working. Let's see if it can figure out how to debug it itself, but I would imagine there's a good chance we're sort of at the limit for what exactly this GPT model is going to be able to do. But okay, I will copy this and say with the example five for loop, I get this error. Can you debug it? And let's see if it's able to fix that or not. All right, so it thought this time for 39 seconds. So you can see as we give it these more complex tasks, it does think for a lot longer than what we were doing earlier. It apologized to us, I guess that's nice. And then it says understanding the issue. So it does seem to understand it that the error is because the interpreter expects certain statements to end with the keyword period T. And it looks like the issue here is with the I glow up, which is sort of what I was expecting. So the root cause is that the interpreter isn't handling increment and decrement operations as standalone statements, especially within the loops increment section. So the solution is here's what we'll do. We'll modify the interpreter to recognize increment and decrement statements and adjust the loop parsing logic. And it gave us an updated JavaScript file. So I'll just copy this and let's go ahead and see if it's able to work. So I believe that is a complete file. And then it does explain the changes it actually made as well. So let's come over here and just copy it in. So I'm going to delete that and replace it with this new code. And let's come back over here again and get this for loop, paste it in here, run the code. And it looks like we get the same issue. Okay, so it wasn't actually able to solve it, which is not good. So let's see what exactly it says it actually did. 
So added handling for increment and decrement statements in parse statement. So glow up, glow down. Okay. I guess that makes sense. And the method handles increment and decrement operations, updating the variable accordingly. So parse increment decrement, and it updates those variables. Adjusted loop parsing logic. Okay. And it says testing the interpreter. So let's see, did it actually do that? Is that actually added to this code here? Parse if statement, print, evaluate. Yeah, so here's that function that added parse increment and decrement. All right, so I'm going to give it one more try and say this is still not working. The given code still gives this, still gives this error message. And oops, hold on, hold on, we're not done yet. Pause, <laughs> still gives this error message and let's paste in the output we got. I will say the um, error handling in this is pretty decent. The fact that it's actually giving me a reasonable error message from this language that it just created. So let's send this and see if it's able to fix it. All right, so this is the longest think it's actually taken so far. So it says it thought for 60 seconds this time and it did a lot of thinking, I suppose. So let's see if it was actually able to fix it this time. So understanding the persistent error, so as the error message indicates that somewhere in the interpreter, it's expecting a period T keyword to terminate its statement, but it's not finding it. And okay, so identifying the root cause, let's step through the interpreter's code execution. So I like the way that it's sort of stepping through the code that we gave it with the interpreter to try to find where it's going wrong, because as a human, that is essentially also what I would be doing. So points to consider, and it has a solution. To resolve the issue, we'll make the following adjustments. Modify the parse increment decrement function, adjust the loop parsing logic, and enhance parse expression. All right, and it gave us an updated JavaScript file. Let's see, is there anything down here below this? There is. Explanation of changes. Okay, so it's telling us what it changed once again. And then it has testing code for us again. All right, so let's once again go back here replace this code with this code. And then we'll come here and get our test code once again, and we'll see if this is able to work. So let's paste it in here, run the code. And again, we get the same error message, expected period T at the end of the statement. And this is sort of where I think chat GPT and a lot of AI tools sort of are right now. Can they give you a great start to something? Yeah, I mean, clearly it did. Like a lot of stuff does actually work here. For example, if we get rid of this and we have some number here, this does actually work, right? It was able to print out this string and this number, right? It did make an interpreter. It didn't make a fully functional interpreter, but it made an interpreter. And you certainly can give it less complex tasks than this one that it can do successfully. And you can also give it code to debug, right? You could have an interpreter that you already made and say, hey, I'm running into this issue. Can you look into it and maybe give me some steps and maybe it'll be able to solve it. Maybe it'll just give you ideas for how to go about solving it. But regardless, potentially it could be helpful. However, we definitely are not at this point yet where we can just give it some big project and it's going to be able to do it because inevitably it's probably going to run into some issues along the way. And what I'm finding more and more every time I do these videos is that these tools, once they run into some issue that they create themselves, are pretty bad at unblocking themselves. Now, will they get better at that over time? Probably, hopefully, I would love to see that happen, but I've yet to really experience any time where I've had GPT or any other AI tool run into an issue on its own that it could fix on its own. And could I, as a developer, go through this JavaScript code and fix this? Yeah, probably but it wrote 393 lines of JavaScript. So it's going to take me a lot of time to go through code I didn't write to debug. It's much easier to debug code you wrote yourself than it is to debug code that somebody else or AI in this case wrote for you. And like I said, this is a project I've essentially done before and it took me a while, but it didn't take me that long. And I would guess that debugging this JavaScript code it gave me would potentially take just as long as it took me to just do the entire thing myself. So would this actually save me a lot of time? Right now, I'm not so sure that it would, but it is still really cool to see, and it's cool to see this progress being made. And that said, if you are curious about the programming language I made out of hate comments, you should go ahead and give that video a watch. It's one of my favorites, and frankly, not one that performed very well on this channel, so most of you all probably haven't seen it, but I'll link it right over here to watch next.